Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Mega Man here, and I am back for yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Metroid for the NES or Nint Nintendo Entertainment System, or the Famicom Disk System for those of you who lived in Japan. So, last time, we did manage to able to explore for quite a bit for the likes of Brunstar, and along with that, we did manage to able to explore the majority of the forms of uh, Norfair for not only just trying to able to obtain ourselves the most useful items or power-ups in the game, to be more specifically of high jump boots, allows you to jump high, and of course, the screw attack. Screw attack! And all that stuff, though. So, because of that, though, and also we did manage to pick up some missile expansion um, tanks, as well as the forms of that particular uh, things itself as well. So either way though, and uh, today for this video is the fact that we're most able to, almost potentially, we can able to actually wrap things up for everything for the likes of the forms of uh, Norfair. And every once in a while though, we can able to potentially try to explore uh, the next area we can able to actually hop into, which... Uh, We'll probably talk more details about that at some point later down the road. To be more specifically, when it gets to the point of doing new forms of today, and even potentially speaking as well from the likes of first day as well. Because I say first day, because remember what I said this earlier, ever since and during the course of in uh, last Friday, is the fact that the reason why I'm going to have to able to upload this particular part with on Tuesday this time around, as opposed to Monday or Wednesday, because obviously that we've pretty much almost to the point where we've almost nearly at the end for the likes of playing through Metroid and stuff like that. So even then, no. Oh, by the way, before I get into more details about this, here we go on to this next area. And be very, very, very extra careful on this point because if you dare fall off onto these pits, basically, though, you probably ended up getting stuck. So because of that, though, well, it might actually take forever if you managed to be able to equip yourself the various suits. So because of that, though, yeah, it's a pretty easy way you can able to actually mess things up on that area. So just in case you have to be super careful with the forms of precision timing and jumps and stuff like that. So, yeah, you probably get the idea about that. So, and this lava pit right there is fake. So because of that, though, we found another secret passageway that we can able to actually go into. So, uh, anyway, and it's also worth noting for, I do apologize for that background noise you'll be hearing because my washing machine is once again super loud. So I do apologize for that particular, uh... Uh, that particular noise right there, so, uh, anyway, so from here, after we able to actually just to bypass for that particular obstacle course, as you saw, and meet up with the force of the Chozo statue, as you can see, we actually got ourselves the, uh, wave beam, and what this does is the fact that this allows you to able to actually shoot three projectiles at once, and basically you can able to actually eliminate those enemies super easily. Well, usually, I will say this right now, the wave beam is really good. Like, seriously, this beam is actually very powerful, and you can able to actually devastate those enemies, no problem. But, on the other hand, though, whenever we get to the end game, though, the wave beam will be useless in the end game. Just because, I just want to point things out right about now, that uh, it's all whenever we're done with the forms of the majority of the game itself, to be more specifically after dealing with the forms of the second boss coming up, as well as the forms of some other collectibles that we need to get, that uh, we do need to able to still need to re-grab the actual, uh, the ice beam, so that way we can able to finish the game proper. So because of that though, yeah, all in all, I'll say this again, the wave beam is awesome, but it's just the fact that you can't use that at the end game, because, well, I'm sure that most Metroid players will already expect what this is going, so... Anyway, uh, today's day is, of course, the, um, I would say that today it is, it's the 22nd of March today, in this case, in 2022 today, because, again, like I said before, that, uh, the reason why we have to able to go for uploading schedules on the final two parts, because I say the final two parts of this game in general, because, as far as why, as you probably already know, that ever since on yesterday, that Raid the Flying Squirrel, that he somehow managed to able to get back into Donkey Kong Land 2, um, ever since in yesterday on Monday, so because of that though, because, well, relatively speaking, it's just the fact that we just want to get the actual shortest game out of the way first, and then, also every once in a while though, is the fact that I'm pretty sure that, uh, Sonic did already did manage to finish up with this entire Let's Play of, during the course of the weekend, that he obviously finished up with his Let's Play of DuckTales on the NES, because I just feel like we were able to actually up for this point, especially noticeable how a lot of people seem to able to 
have some a lot of like uh, nostalgic feelings for the sake of the forms of DuckTales on the NES. Sure, that game is relatively short, oh and all, but regardless of such though, he did he did have a lot of fun playing the first game, despite the fact that it gets a bit tad difficult on certain situations, but even then though, maybe at some point in this weekend as well, maybe we can probably do DuckTales 2. Well, I'm sure that some toys else were able to do that game instead of Sonic, because obviously Sonic, he already did done the first game, so because of that though, I'll let uh, some toys else can able to do the sequel on the NES as well, potentially speaking, spoiler alert. So, uh, or even maybe potentially in the future, we can probably do uh, DuckTales Remastered on during the course of maybe at some point next year in 2023 to able to mark the 10th anniversary of this amazing remaster. Despite the fact that, well, it's all by that time until 2023 roll around, that it's kind of unfortunate you can't, uh, you can no longer get the game uh, digitally on the Wii U just because of the forms of how the fact that the eShop uh, apps is going to be closed. So. Yeah, it seems kind of sucks for those of you all the Nintendo fanboys out there who were able to actually experience the game. So, well, at least luckily for me, I still managed to able to got the physical version on the PS3 and a digital download version on the Xbox 360 version. So, and about that time, if I was going to able to actually practice that game on my own time on the PlayStation 3 version first, and then eventually though, we'll be able to do a Let's Play of the game on the Xbox 360 version. So, that'll be the better alteration, at least in my opinion, just because, well, the quality needs to be up there, so uh, I guess that makes a totally obvious sense, so... Anyway, so now we've actually, yeah, you see that pit's down right there? Uh, basically, like I said, if you do fall off, well, you're about to get stuck. So, yeah, just be very careful and just be so precise with that jumps and stuff like that. Because sometimes I swear to God that the jumps in this game sometimes feels a bit too kind of finicky. And also it's kind of feels like frustration sometimes. But regardless of such though, we finally managed to be able to pass through it. So, uh... Who knows for me, for my uh, jumping skills and all that stuff though, so uh, yeah, I guess that makes it totally obvious, so. However though, when it comes to the forms of the different uh, uploading schedules for the sake of the forms of those two Let's Plays specifically, between, you know, Metroid along with Donkey Kong Country, uh, Donkey Kong Land 2, I keep on thinking of Donkey Kong Country Returns, but we'll get there at some point guys, we will get to that at some point, but we still got a whole ways to go when it comes to Donkey Kong games we might able to tackle through. Like, you know what I mean, we've already done the, the rest of the trilogy on the Super Nintendo, and as well as the forms of Donkey Kong Land 1, so hopefully we were able to actually let Raid the Flying Squirrel, while potentially trying to able to wrap things up through everything for the likes of Donkey Kong Land 2, maybe at some point in during the course of next week or something like that. Well, along the same lines as the forms of, uh, about to get started with the forms of not only for the likes of the forms of uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, because after all, we've only got about uh, three more days left now until that game finally comes out on Switch. So I'm very excited about this, even though despite the fact that the game runs at uh, 30 FPS as opposed to 60 frames per second, because, well, I'm sure that some other Toy Cells has already mentioned about this, so I, I guess at the very least I don't think I can able to mention about that again, so... Anyways though, so let's go ahead and continue forward, so because of that though, I just need to able to double check on the map quickly, so just in case if I'm on the, exactly on the right track. So I think we're on the right track so far, so I'm guessing that's a good thing, so... Anywho though, um, aside from all that stuff though, I suppose I should probably mention about this as well, is the fact that until tomorrow anyway, that uh, basically Kid Icarus Uprising on the 3DS will be, I think in Japan anyway though, that game in Japan already becomes- No! Oh, you kidding me. I got stuck. Ah, oh, this is this is very underwhelming, especially that if I get stuck like this, this means my health will start to slowly drain. But thankfully with the various suits, that it just makes things a bit easier for my honest uh, opinion for that stuff though. But either way though, still it's annoyingly consistent sometimes if you're about to get stuck on certain spots. But hopefully we'll be able to consider this a fact, so... Anywho though, um... Yeah, with the forms of Kid Icarus Uprising in Japan though, uh, happy 10th anniversary by the way of that game in Japan, although until tomorrow, then I'm sure that Ray the Flying Squirrel will talk more details about that until, again, when he goes back onto Donkey Kong Land 2. So because of that though, that's, uh, that game in the English version will be expected to become a decade old, which, 
Yeah, before I've looked back on it though, at least the visual still looks really damn good for the 3DS title, but I will have to admit though right away, the controls is not that perfect, because sometimes it gives me a lot of hand cramps, although, I might trying to potentially try to get the game again to give this game a second chance but uh it's just the fact that with a lot of ridiculous hand cramps i keep on having right now even for after playing the game for multiple hours especially noticeable if you're trying to deal with the game likely uh a uh, 9.0 intensity difficulty oh jeez that'll be hellish to go through especially noticeable with a lot of those achievements you have to go through but it knows what it is for the most part, I mean, the only good thing about it though is the fact that that Sakurai is actually involvement with that particular producer of that particular game itself, I suppose, which that was before when, you know, Smash Bros. for the 3DS and the Wii U exist, so, yeah, I guess that makes it totally obvious for the sake of time, so... Anyways, I think we're on the right track at this point, although I'm guessing we're on the right track so far, because now we've actually, uh, done with everything from the likes of, uh, Norway, or Norfair right now. Seriously, I keep thinking about the forms of the actual country that is actually has, like, Norway, but I don't know exactly what Norway is, but, uh, regardless of such, though, we'll scout able to ignore that speech for now, and head down here, and you'll might as well find yourself another elevator. So in this case, we've actually going to be ended up into uh, the next area, which appears to be known as, well, if we immediately go into it though, here we have the forms of Ridley's Lair. So because of that though, since that overall we've already did done a uh, crate's Lair, so here we are onto the second layer, which this time around though is involves around Ridley. So of course you know exactly what Ridley is all about, because obviously he's the famous uh, Metroid characters of all time because he'll be the most iconic boss from the likes of the forms of the rest of the series including uh, the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as a playable character. Although I really still wish if I had an amiibo though because the amiibo of Ridley looks pretty damn cool. But regardless of anything else though, unfortunately I didn't have it sadly. So probably I'll get one eventually though but at the moment it's disgustingly expensive at this point for certain amiibos every nowadays because well, you know what I mean. Although, speaking of Amiibo, actually, is the fact that one thing I should probably mention, that uh, all it does from the likes of the forms of that functionality, for the likes of uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, uh, basically, though, uh, is the fact that the only thing it does is the fact that all it gives you is just a healing item, as well as the actual uh, coins for currency. And that's it, really. I mean, it's not much uh, else to it, though, per se, just because every once in a while, though, with certain Switch games every now and then, they obviously do not include that much Amiibo stuff every now and then, which I guess that's totally understandable when it comes to other games like uh, Mario Tennis Aces or uh, Mario Golf Super Rush and also, say, applies to Mario Party Superstars, which I think that was the only game outside of the forms of sense, uh, let's just say, Island Tour, that um, Mario Party Superstars does not offer us an amiibo functionality, which is kind of odd, unlike, you know, Mario Party 10, Star Rush, the Top 100, and especially noticeable with uh, Super Mario Party, that those are uh, four of those uh, Mario Party games being made by uh, ND Cube, that those are the only games able to have amiibo functionality, which, yeah, I guess that makes a totally obvious sense, but hey. So yeah, this place is going to be filled to the brim with a lot of deadly creatures here and there, especially noticeable with this very uh, weird and odd ball projectile that we've already saw several times in Norfair. So either way though, we can able to accept this much, so... And also, these guys are going to be kind of a pain to deal with, but luckily, since with that we still got ourselves our screw attack with us, this makes the entire journey a lot easier, because, well, if you try to able to jump straight towards them, Thankfully though, you will able to actually not only get your health back, but also hopefully you will able to get yourselves your missiles back as well. So anyways, before we continue, uh, there might be something that is usually involves around in this area, so obviously we do need to use the Morph Ball Bombs in order to able to do this though. Oh, there it is, there's a secret right there. So in this case though, we need to find a hole because, uh, yeah, that massive wall right there actually blocks our progressioning, so... Something to keep in mind, so anyways, I, I should probably point things out as well, this is by far the shortest video we can ever do, because, well, you probably already know what to expect. Alright, so that energy tank right over there, 
you have to do a pretty damn precise jump right there. Because, if you couldn't tell already, there's a hole in that room. And if you mess up at that jump and then miss that energy tank is spare, well, basically you have to go for this entire climbathon all over again. Which, believe me, it will be a lot tedious than I thought it was. But luckily I did this on my first try, so at the very least I did manage to able to go myself another energy tank. So, I think there will definitely be one more energy tank in there somewhere, but uh, we'll save that up and drink at some point on this first day, so... Because, you know, this will be the only time we're able to do this for the likes of changing uh, the uploading schedules for the sake of the forms that only happens in this week. Because, well, let's just say until, like, next week or so, that um, hopefully we'll be back on to more of the uh, the uh, the normal uploading schedules for that point. Like, for instance, that, you know, Raid the Flying Squirrel will be able to go back onto Donkey Kong Land 2 on uh, Tuesday and Thursday until next week. And uh, because of how the fact that some toy sales might be potentially trying to able to be focusing on uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land at some point on next Monday, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Especially noticeable, I wonder if that we can able to do the 100% playthrough of the game, because after all, we've already done loads of Kirby Let's Plays in the past, ranging buddy forms of the retro ones, including some newer games here and there as well, but uh, regardless of such though, it's just the fact that, well, we haven't done uh, a Kirby Let's Play for a while, ever since, um, I would have classified for saying since Kirby Superstar Ultra. Oh, and by the way, there's another part that you have to also do a bit of a precise, uh, morph ball bombs right here, because if you accidentally fall off, I think you have to start all over again, I guess. So, yeah, it's a bit picky with that jump over there, just to classify for something. If you do manage to make it, then obviously you'll be good to go, I guess. But it's just about a lot of emphasis on timing around here, so... Alright, there's another uh, missile expansion right here, so uh, that should be pretty cool, yo. Especially noticeable about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, I think we've almost collected every single missiles throughout the game. So, at the very least, that, yeah, we're gonna have to cut this short, because I know, like I said, this is by far the shortest video we've ever done. But, I mean, let's face it, I just need to able to actually get the hardest parts out of the way. So, join me next time for more of Let's Play of Metroid, and that is the fact that hopefully we'll try to fight against with Ridley, and maybe we can finish up the game completely as well. So, yeah, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Later, fellas.